Okay, we have our interesting integral. This one's from MIT 2023 finals number one. We have the integral from zero to pi over two, cube root of tan x over sine x plus cos x all squared dx. Okay, I think there's definitely a few different ways to do it. I think we could probably do something with the trig, but I didn't really look into it. Just because I had something specific in mind, I wanted to use some results that we have from previous videos. Um, another thing you could do is, I think you could just do some u substitutions. But anyway, let me get into my method on this. The first thing I wanted to do is what is sometimes known as the OWL transformation when you multiply in secant squared x. This is gonna work pretty nice with what we have in the denominator being squared. So let me rewrite it. And in the numerator, I'm just gonna leave it basically, just rewrite and bring in the secant squared x at the end. And then in the denominator, let's multiply it inside the parentheses. So then inside the parentheses, we're only multiplying by just secant x because everything's squared. So when you do that, secant x times sine x is gonna be tan x. And then secant x times cosine x is just gonna be a one. And then now because we've got tangent here and here and the derivative of tangent right here, I can do a u substitution on it. We'll set u equal to tan x, du equals secant squared x dx. So we have our du right here. Go ahead and substitute. Now plug in pi over two, tan at pi over two is going to infinity. Plug in zero, we get zero. This piece I can write as u to the one third. All this is du, and then the denominator just becomes u plus one all squared. But now in this thing, again, we've got multiple ways to do it. I had this come up in a previous video a few weeks back, and I thought it was a really interesting case, and I derived a formula for this. Now, in that video what we did, if you do it out, you could do a substitution on it. Like, I think this is a pretty good substitution that we used in that video. If I did t equals u plus one, I think that's gonna simplify down. Although it's a little bit, although there is quite a few steps to it, so that's one option. Another option on this is beta function. So for beta function, we'd have this formula right here where we just need to equate z1 and z2 to this exponent here. And then we would just like for one third, we could write this as four thirds minus one. And then we can get our z1 value as four thirds. And then we can go to a solution in terms of the gamma function. I think this is a fine way to go, but I think what we derived a few weeks back in that other video is a little more general and maybe easier to use. So what we did in that other video, you could view it as a Mellon transform, but we're not really using any properties of this. We're just interested in this formula. So we have this here for our definition of the Mellon transform, that if we just have something, an integral going from zero to infinity, x to the s minus one, that's gonna be this piece right here. And then the f of x part's gonna be everything else. In our case, it's gonna be something in this form here, one over one plus x to the a to the b. For this a value, notice in our case, it is simpler. The a value is just gonna be one. The exponent on the u is just one. And that's why the second method would work with the beta function. But with this, it's a little more general because we can work with different exponents on the u without doing another substitution. And so our formula for this over here, which we derived in that other video, I'll provide a link in the description, is this right here. You will notice it's very similar to that beta function formula. Again, just kind of a little more general. So what we can do is go ahead and use this. We know all these values. The, in the numerator, this s minus one part, the s value is what we found before, four thirds. So we can say s is gonna be four over three. Like I said, our a value equals one. And the b value, this exponent here, is just gonna be a two. So from here, we'll just go ahead and use this formula. Our a value, one over one, so that's just gonna be a one in front. We don't have to worry about that. Gamma b minus s over a, so that's gonna be two, minus, again, a is just one, so this is gonna be two minus four thirds times gamma of s over a, just gamma of four thirds. And then the denominator, we're gonna have just gamma of b, so that's just gonna be gamma of two. But now for gamma of two, that's easy. We've got a reduction formula for the gamma function. The gamma function's just, the gamma function's just an extension of the factorial for non-integer values, so for so for gamma of n plus one, we can say that this is the same thing as n times gamma of n. So for gamma of two, this is just gonna be just reducing by one. This is gonna be one times gamma of one. And actually this is kind of a silly way to do it because really what we could do is just look at the factorial definition. For gamma of n plus one, this is gonna be the same thing as n factorial. So for gamma of two, this is just one factorial or one. 
since that's one, let's just cross that off. We don't have to worry about that part. But now I do have a use for this formula right here. It wasn't a total waste of time because I can use it on this gamma of four thirds value we have right here. For gamma of four thirds, using this to reduce it by one, I can write gamma of four thirds as one third times gamma of one third. So now just cleaning this up, two minus four thirds is two thirds. So for the first part, we have gamma of two thirds. For the second part, we have this one third times gamma one third. Let's write it as gamma one third all over three. But now for gamma of two thirds and gamma of one third, it's hard to find the value of those individually, but together we can use Euler's reflection formula on it. So gamma one minus X times gamma of X. So notice the inputs add up to one like they do here. This is gonna be the same thing as just pi over sine pi x. So using this, our x value on this is gonna be just one third. You could use two thirds and it would work just the same way. So going ahead with this, we're gonna have, here I'll write this as one third in front. Using the formula, we'll have pi sine pi over three, pi, pi times one third or just pi over three. Pi over three is just square root of three over two. So let's put that together. We'll have pi, I'll flip it and bring the two into the numerator. We'll have two pi, three squared to three. And I think I'll rationalize it just to match the MIT solution. So multiplying by one square to three over square to three for my final solution, we have just two square to three pi over nine, and that's it. Okay, there you go. Really nice problem from MIT 2023. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.